Whether you are black, brown, or white, you are welcome here. Whether you are male or female, you're welcome here. Whether you are gay or straight, cisgender or transgender, you are welcome here. Your seat at God's table is not up for discussion or debate. It is ever and always yours. You are welcome, you are accepted, and you are held by the God who made you and loves you just as you are, and not as somebody else says you should be. Let's worship together. Church family and friends, my name is Barbara Teal, and I am your liturgist today. If you have not signed in, please do so after the service on the counter in the north house. The flowers today are in memory of Ken Rose. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. If you are new to our church, and if you are willing, visitors with us. Please join me in our call to worship. We come before God as equal in God's sight. God knows us thoroughly. And, and forgives us and loves us completely. None of us are perfect and without blemish. Yet God has called us children and asked us to be compassionate and forgive in our witness. We are called to joyful obedience in God's realm. Thanks be to God who trusts us and pours abundant love on us. Amen. Good morning, church family. Good morning. Good morning. It is good to see you in the house of the Lord. Let's stand together. And if you'd like to use your name, page number 12, I see the mighty power of God. Let's lift up our voices this morning together. I sing the mighty power of God made the mountains rise that spread the flowy seas abroad 
and built the lovely skies. I sing the wisdom that ordained the sun to rule the day. The moon shines full at God's command and all the stars obey. The goodness of our God that filled the earth with food. God formed the creatures with a word and then pronounced them good. Oh, how the wonder are displayed where'er I turn my eye. If I survive the ground I tread or gaze upon the sky. Oh, or flower, but may your glory known. The clouds arise and spread their showers, but orders from your throne. All life is but a gift from you and ever in your care wherever people gather you oh god are present there good morning again good morning those of you are online, welcome. You are part of our worship service, part of our community of faith. Uh, let us know that you're joining us online. You can put something in our uh, Facebook feed or YouTube feed. That would be great. Or email us. Let us know that you joined us. And maybe you're joining us for the first time, whether live right now or sometime this week. Let us know. And if you have any questions about our church, uh, email us, email myself, and we'd be sure to address any of those questions. Uh, good to see all of uh, you folks here this morning. Uh, those of you are on site, good to see your smiling faces, right? Some of you are smiling, at least. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we wanted to say uh, happy birthday to uh, Pam Smith. Uh, Pam might be joining us online. Happy birthday, Pam. And Arthur. Art, happy birthday. Great to see you. Uh, Art is one of our new members who joined last week, so it's his birthday this week. And happy anniversary to Larry and Rachel B, who are still settling in their new home in the villages. Uh, so uh, happy anniversary to them. Uh, nice to uh, see, uh, who's Jane? Jane? I said hi to Jane. Hi, hi Jane. She, she usually joins us online from Maine every week. But she's in the villages for three weeks, so. Uh, Hi, Jane. Welcome back. Nice to, nice to have you today. Uh, just a, a couple of announcements. First off, ho hopefully you could go in the, in the narthex and there on the back table. Uh, you'll notice various uh, activities are going on. We have the Dine with Nine. This is a great uh, opportunity for you to get to know some people. Just sign up. That would be great. And some other activities that we have going on coming up soon. This week, we have a barbecue and a movie um, with uh, the uh, Fred Rogers movie with Tom Hanks. So it'll be a barbecue. I think there's already 21 people signed up for it. So it would be great if you're able to attend. It's this week, um, October 21st. It would be great, just a relaxing, fun night of uh, fellowship and, uh, and uh, a good movie as well. So you could uh, check that out. I thank you for uh, supporting our church week after week. Our stewardship is coming up for uh, yeah, October and November. We really focus on our pledges. So just so we know what kind of budget we're looking for for, for next year. Pledges are active right now. You can go online and if you're uh, able to uh, Make that pledge now for 2023. That would be great. I believe it's active right now. Uh, thank you for beginning to considering. You're going to be hearing from some of our church family as well as Jack in the coming weeks uh, about uh, pledges. So thank you, those of you who give uh, on a regular basis as well. And 
Uh, every little bit helps. And thank you, those of you online who support our church as well. Thank you so much. Let's ask God's blessing on these uh, donations. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that we could always trust in you. You are the only God, and out of your great mercy, you have given us so much. In response to the blessings that you give to us, we give you this offering today. With it, we worship you and give you our whole selves to you and to each other. Please take this offering and use it for your work, for your work of love, your work of justice, your work of mercy. Extend it, multiply it, help us to reach and influence to the way of love, to the way of peace, to the way of justice. Use our church to be a light in our community and in our world, to the very love of God, to the very heart of God. And today, may it be a blessing to men. We ask this in your many names. Amen. We ask that you continue to um, pray for some folks. Uh, this morning, we ask that a special prayer goes out to Alex Ariano. The other evening, he took a mild heart attack. Uh, he's, he's, in, he's positive, he's doing good. I talked with him several times, just texted him this morning to see how he's doing. Um, and he's hoping to meet with the doctors and surgeons about a surgery early this week, Monday or Tuesday, uh, for a uh, bypass surgery. So please keep them in your prayers along with uh, the surgeons as well. Uh, also, um, Diane Carr is going to be going into surgery this week, so we'll pray for her. And we pray also for uh, Jay Richards, who's going to be, uh, Jay's here today, so we we'll be praying for you. Uh, is it this week? Friday. Oh, next Friday. Uh, cardiac uh, catheterization. So uh, we pray um, for that blockage and for everything to go well with that as well. And please pray for Mary Ellen Shea's daughter, Christy Tomlinson, who has some health concerns. Also, please pray for Robin Anderson, who has some really serious uh, health issues uh, going on. And I'm sure right now, those of you online, those of you with us, you have somebody on your heart that you're concerned with, that you'd like to pray, you're going to have an opportunity in a moment. Um, and let's bring all these prayer requests to God at this moment.
Merciful God, we acknowledge that you are powerful and wonderful, that you are eternally present and gracious and close to each and every one of us. We are grateful for the love and the comfort that you give to each person. Your love is without end. Your presence is without end. Prompted by your spirit and encouraged by your faithfulness, we lift up all these cares and concerns that are upon our hearts, the burdens and the worries of our lives. We pray for the sick, that they would be healed, that the broken would be mended and the, the grieving would be comforted. Lord, we think of those that were mentioned this morning. Touch them, heal them, comfort them, and those that are upon our hearts right now. Love of God, we continue to pray for peace in our world and for our leaders that they would gain wisdom. We think of the forsaken that they would be gathered in. We pray that the sorrowful would be consoled and that the poor would be lifted up and the anxious would be released. We pray for those making new starts, maybe, and for those nearing a journey's end. We pray for those facing hard choices and for those enduring painful situations and even painful consequences. We pray for those filled with bitterness, for those who are just empty. Help us to forgive as you have forgiven us. We pray that your church here at UCC at the Villages might live into its potential, that as the body of Christ we may be strengthened to the work of the ministry of love and compassion and justice, and that we do it with joy and with thanksgiving. Raise up leaders, even here, raise up servants, that we would give generously and serve willingly, that we could be a church family. We pray for the courage to follow the way of Jesus, that we would continue the message of the good news of Christ. We pray for those who no one's praying for, those that have been forgotten, those that feel alone. May they feel your presence. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Would you pray with me the prayer that Jesus taught us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Uh, at this time, we're going to have our membership ceremony. I believe that's part of the audience it is. Um, we invite our new members to come forward. We have a bunch this morning. Those are on site will be Jim and Sue, Cindy and Sandy, I see them here, Kathy and John, and uh, Dave. Please come on up. And our online members, who are joining are Melissa, Karen, Connie, and Kim. So we invite the members to come forward. You know, we're not a perfect church, and we don't force anybody to join. And all these folks are willingly joining to be part of our church family. And we're not a perfect church. And hopefully when you join our church, you know that. <laughs> Uh, but we're a church that strives to love God and love our neighbor and to follow the way of Jesus. And we're not a creedal church. We don't tell you what to believe. Uh, we, we invite you to covenant with us to, for justice, for uh, love, to promote peace, to follow the way of Jesus and preaching the good news of Jesus the Christ. Uh, and so uh, we practice covenant membership. And so to this morning is part of this covenant membership right here, where the congregation will make a promise and our new members will make a promise to each other and to our community as well. So let me let me start with our online uh, members first. Let me start with Kim Kirkwood. Kim is um, right over here. Your name. She comes from Massachusetts. She lives in Northampton, Massachusetts. She's retired. 
and uh, she joins us every every week. And uh, I think you'll be receiving a, a bio next month of her, hopefully. So welcome, Kim. And uh, any way that we could uh, minister unto you, you let us know. And any way that you think you can serve us, you let us know as well. Uh, Melissa is joining us. She's online. Uh, I think she's online right now. Melissa Bernaski. Uh, she sent in her bio. Actually, we've known Melissa for many years. She comes from Massachusetts. She's uh, she was a paramedic and uh, an RN as well. Currently an RN in the public school systems there in Massachusetts. And we've known her for years. And she has a home here in Florida. So she hopes to visit us soon in person. But uh, she's a wonderful addition. She joins every week, a wonderful supporter, and uh, certainly a supporter of the way of love and peace. I always appreciated that. She says, right now, the fall colors in New England are beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome, Melissa. And, uh, and then we have Connie and Karen. Um, Connie and Karen. Uh, they're joining us from Atlanta. They join us every week from Atlanta. And those of you who don't, if Connie's last name looks familiar, there's a reason why. Because her mom and dad come to our church. And uh, just raise your hand, uh, Kay and Tim. So, that's, uh, so you must be delighted that they're you're thrilled. <laughs> they're, they're joining us. And uh, they have a wonderful love. Uh, uh, bi biography. They, they, they have, they have kids. Actually, they have a dog, Ember, and two cats, as they call it. <laughs> grandchildren. you have grandchildren, and they are married. They were married in uh, 2002 uh, at Coral Gables UCC. That's where they were going for a while, and they just love our services online and the message that we have. And they served in various capacities. So I've had a couple a couple conversations with them, been texting back and forth, and hopefully we can think of some creative ways that they can serve and that we can serve them uh, as well. They actually produced a uh, they they have a very interesting business. Before we show that, okay, we'll show that first. Though. I'm Connie Felix, and I'm Karen Parker, and we are watching uh, virtually the UCC at the Villages from Winston, Georgia. Delighted to be a part of this wonderful church. And by the way, thank you for waiting at us online. When you come in and we leave, we love seeing you all and appreciate all the wonderful energy that you share musically as well as through the messages. So happy to be joining and we'll see you in person on Christmas. Great to be a member. See you all. Bye bye. <laughs> They uh, started, they co-founded Firepower Seminars, and they are certified firewalk instructors. So if you are curious to know what that's about, check their Facebook out and their webpage out, Firepower Seminars. Very interesting. And Connie actually has a book uh, dealing with fear and stuff like that. Very interesting book. So. <laughs> So would everybody turn around and say hello to Kim, Melissa, Connie, and Karen? <coughs> Welcome. Now let's do our on-site, and we could, they could do it personally. So we can start with John. For those of you who feel comfortable doing it, if not, I could jump in for you. No. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. My name is John Stabesky, I'm standing next to my wife, Kathy. Uh, we've been here three months. Uh, we own a house here. Uh, I'm glad to be here in this church. Thank you. My name is Kathy Nichol. Um, I've been a member of uh, UCC since the early 70s. Married this guy about almost three years ago, and we're happy to be here and hope to meet people. Good. This one's from most recently, I was on. 
And uh, they came during the you know wet season, so they she said it rains so much here. <laughs> it does. Dave. My name is David Whitaker. I'm known as Doc, uh, and there's a UCC story behind that. It's pretty long, so I'll do that some other time. <laughs> um, but I'm very happy to be here. I uh, have. It's a big moment for me because I was with the Dutch Reformed Church. Uh, we're split over the issue of homosexuality, and so I'm glad to come out again with the Lord uh, down here in UCC. And I brought with me my partner of 10 years, Romeo, <coughs> in the Navy, recently retired. I have two students from my dance studio, which is the Fruitland Park. Uh, and I also have, um, well, because I don't have any biological children, I have three boys and a godson, and this is one of my sons, Christian. Uh, who's an actor. And, uh, Dave has given my wife and I uh, a couple lessons already, so, uh, <laughs> dance lessons, and he's got a wonderful studio, a wonderful uh, work he's doing there. So. And they're very good at it. No, <laughs> you're lying in church right now. <laughs> Janice is good, but not me. <laughs> uh, my name is Sue Bodenner. And um, this is the first church that I, every Sunday, hear the message that my seat at the table is not up for discussion. I really like that, and I like seeing it in action here. And uh, I really appreciate, Pastor, that you know your people. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad to be here. My name is Jim Bobenner. Uh, Sue and I have lived here in the villages now uh, seven years. Uh, we've spent 20 years or so uh, supporting humanitarian uh, efforts around the world and advocating for issues of social justice. And it's refreshing to, for us to see a church, a faith community, that is open and affirming. Thank you. Amen. I'm Sandy Allen. To be a part of a community of faith, like we have all said, that accepts and just embraces and loves all of God's children, all of us, all of his beautiful creations. I have to tell you, when I first saw the film that came up where the young man was talking about this, I got goosebumps and tears in my eyes and I said, what a beautiful message. I want to be a part of this. Um, of course, I'm very, very supportive of my sister, and anybody that's going to be mean to her or not expect her <laughs> does not rank well. Look out, folks. <laughs> Look out. She defends her sister. That's right. So I'm glad to be a part of all of this and all of you. Thank you. And uh, hopefully, Sandy, it's okay what I'm going to say. Sandy, Sandy uh, has an active TikTok uh, ministry, I should say. I started following her on TikTok. She has 84,000 followers. <laughs> Dandelion Girl, Dandelion Girl, yeah. 1957. And, and you'll see her taken sometimes around here, so um, that's what she's doing. She's, uh, she's on TikTok. Those of you who don't know, who, who doesn't know what TikTok is? <laughs> a few of you, but uh, she has 84,000. For those of you who don't, that's a lot. I have like two, so. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I, I knew, I knew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. But uh, welcome. So um, I have some questions, and then uh, our new members will answer, and then our church family will make a promise. Do you agree to covenant with us in striving for unity, to follow in the way of Jesus, helping our church to practice radical hospitality, to promote justice, working for peace, growing in God's grace, attending and inviting others to share in our community of faith? Do you promise to pray for our leaders and support our church through your time, talents, and treasures? Amen. Yes. I do. Congregation, would you repeat? We welcome you to our church community. We promise you our friendship and prayers as you share the hopes and labors of Jesus with your Have some certificates to pass out. Mm -hmm. Our diaconate uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. here person. Cindy. 
in the name of Jesus Christ and representing the UCC at the villages, we welcome you with open arms. Yeah. <laughs> Sandy, you're beautiful. Thank you, dear. <laughs> On behalf of UCC at the villages, we welcome you. Thank you. Jim, on behalf of the UCC at the Villages, we welcome you. Thank you. Sue, on behalf of the UCC at the Villages, we welcome you. David, on behalf of the UCC at the Villages, we welcome you. On behalf of the UCC and the Villages, we welcome you. Welcome. And last but certainly not least, John, on behalf of the UCC and the Villages, we welcome you. And we also want to say, Kim, Melissa, Connie, and Karen, we welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Thank welcome. You. Thank you. Jesus, give us more faith. 
The second reading comes from Ephesians chapter 4, beginning at verse 31. Get rid of all bitterness, passion, and anger. No more shouting or insults. No more hateful feelings of any sort. Instead, be kind and tender-hearted to one another and forgive one another as God has forgiven you through Christ. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thank you. This morning we're going to talk about something that is necessary in our relationships with one another. Two things happen all the time in our relationships. Uh, we, and I'm going to use the word sin, we sin against people we know and love, and then people that we know and love sin against us. How do we resolve that? What are some steps? Well, the first step is forgiveness. Forgiveness. Forgiving one another. Now, next to love one another, forgive one another is repeated the most. 17 times in the New Testament alone, we're told to forgive one another. We're on a series called Relationship Goals. And these are goals in our relationships. These are goals in our, our church family. And forgiving one another is one of those goals. We looked at encourage one another. We looked at put up with each other. Today, we're going to talk about forgive one another. Now, forgiveness is, is tricky. Because it's kind of hard to define. Is it an emotion? Is forgiveness just an emotion? Where, you know, we have to feel like we've forgiven somebody. Is it the words that we say? Is it just saying, I'm sorry? Is it a behavior? You know, when we say we forgive someone, does it come with actions? Or is it all three of them? So forgiveness is kind of tricky because it's hard to define. But I think that cliche or proverbial phrase is true. To forgive is divine and to err is human. There's a lot of truth in that because we're told that God is a forgiving God. He forgives us. As far as the east is from the west, he has removed our transgressions. He has removed our debts so to speak. So God is a forgiving God, and that's how he operates in God's relationships. And he calls us to act like that as well. But it's hard to have a culture of forgiveness, especially in the world that we live in, because there's so much injustice. There's so much repeated pain, repeated offenses. That's why Jesus says this in Matthew chapter 5. You've heard it said, an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, because our culture is more on, you know, revenge or balance in the books. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth. But then Jesus turns it around and says, think of a different way of operating relationships. I say to you, don't resist an evildoer. Whoever strikes you, on the right cheek, turn to him and uh, the left as well. Uh, I don't know, Jesus. <laughs> I kind of like the culture, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. <laughs> In fact, let's be honest. How many movies are based upon forgiveness? Not many. Then again, how many movies are based upon revenge? Well, all action Films are basically based upon revenge, settling the score, getting even. The whole American idea of justice is revenge or retribution, payback. For many, revenge is like a moral duty. I want us to think that forgiveness is also a moral duty. Now, forgiveness has been thought of primarily as a religious topic for years. 
uh, in all kinds of religions and spiritualities. Forgiveness has been seen as, okay, there's the deity up in the heavens, whether it was Zeus or, you know, Yahweh or Allah or God or Jesus, and we have to try to get their, uh, the God's forgiveness. Whether by way of sacrifice, ritual, confession, or some kind of penance. We're begging the deities to give us and grant us forgiveness. Jesus turned that upside down. Luke chapter 6. Now notice this. He says, don't judge others, and God won't judge you. Don't condemn others, and God will not condemn you. Forgive others, and God will forgive you. You see how he turned it around? He made forgiveness not a religious topic or ritual. He made it interpersonal, which means forgiving one another is very, very important. Very, it's very spiritual. It's needed for the vitality and flushing, uh, flourishing of our, our relationships and our communities and our families. Jesus turned everything upside down here and said, forgiving each other is just as important, if not important, but it's certainly connected with your forgiveness with God. That's a pretty big deal, what Jesus said. Pretty radical. Got some people mad, actually. So let's, just two thoughts with the little time I have this morning on the, our readings this morning. And the first one is this. Let's just be honest. That's a big challenge, isn't it? And I, you know, I don't know if I'm 100% there yet. It's a huge challenge, especially given certain situations and circumstances. It's an enormous challenge. The disciples heard Jesus talk about forgiveness about forgiving people seven times in one day for the same thing for somebody simply saying, I'm sorry. And then they said this, well, Lord, increase our faith. Because <laughs> I certainly don't have that kind of faith. <laughs> um, and maybe you could identify with that. It's a huge challenge to the point where, Lord, increase our faith. And Jesus talks about, you know, seven times in the day, seven times in the day, we turn saying, question about forgiveness, and Jesus mentioned the 70 times seven. This number seven keeps coming up, and for, for some, it's an ancient number that means complete or perfect or infinity. Uh, in other words, forgiveness should always be there on the table. And I, I suppose it's an enormous challenge, but also very controversial. Uh, let me quote uh, behind me it is Protestant theologian Wolf. He says this, Forgiveness flounders because I exclude the enemy from the community of humanity, and I exclude myself from the community of sinners. And I suppose that's when it can be controversial as well. And I believe Jesus teaches something like that here. And, and Jesus did make con uh, forgiveness controversial. The fact that he said, forgive others and then God will forgive you, that was very controversial. You know, Peter basically one time asked Jesus, how often? <laughs> you know, what about all the injustices that happen to people and each other? Uh, it's controversial. Forgiveness is controversial. Do you remember in 2018, Amber Geiger, who's a police officer, was off duty, still in uniform. She confused her apartment number, went to the wrong apartment. The door was open, so, you know, she, she went in and unlocked. She went in. She saw a neighbor. She saw a person in what she thought was her apartment. And... 26-year-old Boothman Jean was there and shot him to death. And uh, here's a, a picture of that Boothman Jean's brother. And he offered forgiveness immediately and blurted out, and you can find the video, 
I forgive you. There was a lot of backlash from that. It was very controversial. A black man forgiven a white woman for killing? Some have suggested that maybe if the tables were turned, would the white person be so forgiven? It was a controversy. Forgiveness is controversial. What about justice? What about accountability? What about punishment? It's complicated. It's, it's controversial. I, I can't solve this dilemma. No one can. We just have to admit it's a challenge to work through it, to wrestle with it, to keep forgiveness on the table and to wrestle with it. What does forgiveness mean? Well, the Greek word here, and I'm going to just lay this out, is an economic term, which means this. We say it in the Lord's Prayer all the time. Forgive us our debts as we forgive. Uh, so it's an economic term. Uh, kind of like, uh, well, we know all the controversy about the college loan forgiveness. Doesn't seem fair. <laughs> Doesn't seem right. Because uh, forgiveness is controversial. But it is an economic term. If you, and it is costly too because somebody has to pay for it. So if you owe me $1,000 and I say I forgive you of that $1,000, I absorb that $1,000. I absorb that payment. I absorb that cost, so to speak. So in that sense, it becomes controversial and costly. So we have to be mindful of that. Now, the Jewish idea of forgiveness is interesting. It, it, it revolved around the three R's, regret, uh, resolution, and restitution. And, you know, that gets complicated. Um, do, do we offer it to everybody? What about without um, regret, or what about somebody without restitution? Because Jesus seems to indicating that it's very unconditional in some ways, but also it's complicated as well. So think of forgiveness this way. It's more about freeing yourself and liberating yourself than anything else. Amen. And I'll tell you why in just a second. There, because forgiveness is, is needed. Now, that doesn't mean that forgiveness is, is very complicated. So that means this. I, I like to think that forgiveness and reconciliation are different. You could offer forgiveness to somebody who offended you, but it doesn't mean that that relationship needs to be reconciled. Does that make sense? Yeah. Some relationships are so toxic and abusive they, they, they need to be broken, or it needs to be severed, but yet forgiveness could be there also. Yep. Forgiveness is a choice, a process where we decide not to allow our thoughts or our spirit or our life to be consumed with resentment and bitterness. I think this is what Jesus is saying, 70 times 7. You still have forgiveness on the table. It doesn't mean that you don't have boundaries. I mean, this stuff is complicated. It's not always the same for each situation. And I think when we talk about forgiveness, we also have to talk about self-forgiveness as well. That's needed. But the recovery for steps eight and nine, I think, are relevant for, for us in this discussion. Let me just read them to you. Make a list of all persons we had harmed and become willing to make amends to them. Make direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when you do so would injure them or others. I think that summarizes pretty good summary of, of the path of forgiveness, what that might look like on both ends. But I said that forgiveness was primarily a religious topic. Only in the scientific community, it's only been studied for about 30 years. I just read an article, 30 Years of Forgiveness, Psychology Today. It was in 1989 that the scientific community witnessed the first empirically based published article on person-to-person -person forgiveness. 
interesting data evolved from this and continues to evolve from this, whether it was person to person or group forgiveness too. But in, in 2015, there was the first forgiveness therapy offered that was uh, credited by the American Psychological Association as well. So 2015 was the first credited forgiveness therapy. They're seeing how important it is. Because forgiveness is considered a mental health issue today. The scientific community began to realize that when people are treated unfairly by others, it can lead to unhealthy anger that is related to uh, the emergence of anxiety, depression, decreased hope, decreased self-esteem, and compromised relationships. It's kind of like what Ephesians 4 was saying, isn't it? Look at Ephesians 4. Put away all bitterness and wrath and anger, slander, together with all that malice, but be forgiven to one another. In other words, forgiveness transforms us to, to, to have a heart of, to have the heart of God. Forgive as Christ has forgiven us. There's something very beautiful about that. Not ignoring the, the situations and the scenarios and the complication and the controversy of it. I know. <laughs> I don't have all the answers to that. But forgive as Christ has forgiven us. Our God is a forgiving God. No questions asked. Unconditional. And for us to be transformed by it, we take those steps of, of resolution and restitution. So what I want to do as we end is I want you to read this along with me. If we could read this together, we can end with this read it in unison. I think this would be a good way. As forgiveness is a goal in our relationships. And I pray that God would give us the spirit of wisdom and discernment as we seek to have the heart of God, to plant seeds in our community and a culture of vengeance, that we would promote peace and forgiveness. Let's read this together. We have all caused harm and offended each other, sometimes in little ways, sometimes in big ways. We forgive ourselves and we forgive each other. We will begin again in love. Amen. Love of God, this declaration that we made acknowledges that we want forgiveness as a goal in all our relationships. Help us to live into this forgiveness. We're able to forgive because we have experienced the forgiveness of God that's wholehearted, that's unconditional. Help us to live into that. So we pray for peace and we pray for wisdom. We pray this in your many names. Amen. Amen. We're so glad that you joined us this morning. Those of you online, thank you for joining us. Now I pray that the peace of God would be with you all. And this world that seems so uncertain. And I pray that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ would be a reminder that you are forgiven, you are loved, and you are accepted. And I pray that the power and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit would give you the grace to offer forgiveness as you seek to live in it and what that means for you. Amen. 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 Would you stand up? We're going to be dismissed in our song. Let there be peace. Amen.